let's look around our timeline here and I'll show you how a few of these things work. First off we have our play controls right here. If your clip has sound you can run sound right there. You can, you can either mute sound or you can run sound. And notice down here we can actually work with an audio track and you can add audio. Simply navigate and find your audio clip and add an audio track in here. And you can have multiple audio tracks as well. So you have several audio tracks. Underneath this little arrow in here, little little pop down thing, we have some additional options for our layers. We have position, opacity, and style. So we can change the style if we want to. And we can change the opacity and we can change the position. So you can actually move things around in here if you want to do that. Let me show you this position quickly. And let me just make sure everything is correct. Let me make sure my opacity is correct. There we go. There's the fish. They were hiding there for a minute. I'm going to make a, a new layer here above this video group. Let's make a new layer right there. Pull that up. There's our new layer. And you can see it's kind of popped in here as layer 3. And I'll bring this there. And we'll extend that. Just grab that edge and extend the length of that layer out. There we are. Now let's put something on that layer. I'm going to hide, hide these layers. Let's just bring this up. There we go. And I'll put some content on this layer 3. So let's just grab a Know, kind of a, a bright fuchsia or something it'll have some contrast in here. Let's grab our shapes over here. Let's go to the custom shape tool and it'll drop down arrow over here and scroll through, see what we have. I'm going to add in some more shapes and just append some more shapes to this and then scroll down. There you go, a fish. I'll use that one. Let's bring our fish in. And I'll put a little fish like that, this little shape. Let me get this timeline to behave itself. There we go. And put our layers up here. Let's do a bevel and emboss on our fish. There it is. Just give it a little bit of something, give it a little bit of texture. And choose OK. So a little basic fish in here. OK, just sitting on the frame. That's fine. Let's now see what we can do with this. It's our, our layer 2 right there is that frame. Here's our shape 1. That's our fish. I'm going to pull that full length. There we are. Now one of the options we have in here, this I can make vector masks in here as well. So depending upon the kind of layer you have, you'll have different options. I'm going to change the position of this. Let's just click on position and I'm going to also come in here and let's just rasterize that layer that will guarantee we can do what we're doing because okay, so this gives us a keyframe I'll then pull this fish back here to the left hand side I'll pull it up like that and that's that position at that point I'll now move the playhead down over here just go to the end like that and I'll click on this keyframe dot. That gives me a second keyframe over here. So I have a beginning keyframe and ending keyframe. I'm now going to take this fish and I'll move the fish down right here. I'll leave it, leave it on just a little bit like that. So there we go. That's my ending keyframe position. Now if I pull the playhead back, you can see what Photoshop does is it takes this from the first keyframe that we did and then it moves that fish down to that second keyframe position. So we've just made an animation in here on the timeline by using the position and these position keyframes. We can do the same thing with the opacity. We can fade a picture in and out if you want to. Let's take a look at that next. Let me just close the shape. And let's go back to our layers over here. I'm going to double click on the background. And let's change that background color. Let's just find a kind of a deep blue and then down here let's make this a very deep blue so our background layer 
and let's grab our gradient tool and that's foreground to background on the gradient tool and I'll do that now if we hide the video there is that background it's kind of a deep color in there so we have our background let's bring our video layer back up again okay same concept now of course the layer zero we just did only goes to this this length again it is a, a default five seconds I need to drag that out to the full length of our video if we have more in here I can actually grab it out and pull us you know further down so there's our background layer okay let's go to our video here and I'm going to come halfway through about 10 seconds in there and let's do an opacity click on that and that gives me a beginning keyframe I just click on that little stopwatch thing let's now pull it down to the end or we'll just go to the end there we are and then click on the keyframe button that gives me a second keyframe at that point bring our layers back. I'm going to change the opacity down to zero. So what I've done is I've faded out that video layer. And we can see that. Let me just bring that up and go back to the beginning. Click on the play button. And we have two things going on. We have our fish going along there. And at about the 10 second mark the background, the, the fish video will begin to fade out, leaving that background showing. And there we go, that video is beginning to fade out. And all we see then is that dark blue to black gradient in the background. So a couple of things happening there. Again, using these keyframes. So you use this keyframe concept to do all of your basic editing in here for your video. All right, let's see how you add in additional video in here. Just to make this easy, there we go. I'm going to just copy our video layer. Let's go back to the beginning again. There it is. And let's bring our layers up, which I have hidden over here on the right-hand side. I'm just going to grab this layer, bring it down to the new layer button, make a copy of that video. So now I have a new layer and also you know sitting in here in our video layer group let's bring our timeline back up again so here's our second bit of video on this is in the video one group as you can see so if I played this through what we would see is all of our content down to this point and then all of us and everything else would hide we would then have our next video showing and we can see that I'll just click this play and let's just drag this out of the way oh grab the wrong one there I want to grab the timeline. There it goes. So it's playing through as you can see here. And background begins to fade out. As we get to this point, we're going to be losing our video frames. And then we just had that new bit of video. Okay. It's obvious how to fix this, of course. Let's just go up here and grab our layer 2 that has our frame. I'll extend the layer 2. Shape 1 has that fish. I can extend that fish out, but of course the fish stops moving at this point. And then we have our two videos and then the background, of course, I can pull that over as well. So now we'll, we'll have just the fade out and then this just pops back on again. So you can easily come in here and bring a new video this way. Now your video doesn't have to be on the same group. You can place your video into a new layer if you want to just like that I can then move it around and notice that I have an overlap going on in here now at that point so this video will fade out and that video will then appear in behind as the fade out happens I need to have this line above the layer 0 of course so I'm just going to grab layer 0 if I can here Yeah, we'll pull it up that way. There we go. So pull the video layer up, layer zero in behind. That's our background. And let's just see what happens now. Go back to the start. Click the play button. It'll play through at about the 10 second 
point, we'll begin to fade out that background. It fades, begins to really be apparent at about the 15 second mark. So there's the fade that's beginning to happen, as you can see. Now, as soon as it gets to that next video, the next video is going to pop up in the background. There it is. There's our new video popped up. And that will continue to play on for the length of the video. Of course, I would want to adjust that pink fish in there and move that keyframe over and get that pink fish out of that position. So you can come in and you can adjust those you know, as you want to. Let's go up to shape number one. That's our our fish in here. Grab that keyframe. I can pull that keyframe just down a little bit. As I pull that out, the motion will be slower on that keyframe. And also while I'm on this keyframe, I can change that end position as well. Let's go back to our layers. Shape one, there it is, we're on that right layer. I'm just going to grab my move tool and let's just get him clear off of the frame. Okay, so now he's not going to be sitting there. So you can interactively edit these things as well. Just go back and forth on these to do your, your edits. So there we go. That's a look at working with this. Now there's more you can do. Let's say I want to have a crossfade between these two. Now in here, if I came in and did a fade out on this, and then a fade in on this using those opacity settings, I could create a crossfade between these two. One would fade out as the other one fades up fairly straightforward process simply using the opacity controls. But there's an easier way to do these fades. I'm just going to take this and move this up onto the same level here as the other videos. And they're now connected. And what we have at this point, of course, is basically just a straight cut between those two video frames. You can see it right there. It just changes between those two video frames. Going up here, we have some fade controls. Fade, cross fade, fade with black, fade with white, and fade with color. I can choose the duration of that fade. I'm just going to type in three seconds here, hit the enter key. So there's now a three second set on that duration. And then simply grab the crossfade, drag it down onto the divided line between these two, and it's going to move the video forward and do the fade all automatically. So just pull this down, you see it right there. Let go, that moves forward, and it gives us that crossfade effect in there. And let's take a look at that. If I hit the play button. That wrong button. There we go. You see the crossfade begin to happen right about now. It'll begin to cross. There it is. There's the crossfade between those two pieces of video. Notice how the fish has slowed down because I moved that keyframe out further. So there we go. That is the basics here of working with the video timeline. You can actually do quite a bit of video editing in here if you want to inside of Photoshop. Now, to be fair about this, I really think that Photoshop is not a very good place to edit video. If this is all you have, then you know certainly go ahead and you can do quite a bit. You have a lot of control in here. It's actually pretty remarkable how much you can do inside of Photoshop. I really think that Photoshop is best if you have something else that you want to work with in here that Photoshop is great at doing all the graphics stuff. If you want to have graphics, for instance, an opening title sequence, and you need to have the have Photoshop to do your fancy lettering, whatever else it is that you want to do, then this is a great place to do that. It gives you all those abilities. But for quality video editing, I personally like to use Adobe's Premiere Pro program. Also, their Premiere Elements program is very good at editing, and it, it's very inexpensive. So those are two good video editing programs. For special effects, I prefer to use the Adobe After Effects program along with the Premiere Pro and then create graphics inside of Photoshop. So I, I work between several programs and I get the best effect that way. But again, if you this is all you have, as you can see, you can do a, a nice amount of video editing and creation right here inside of Photoshop. Thank you for watching my video. I hope you found it useful. If you like this video, click on the like button below to let others know. You can click the subscribe button so you don't miss any of my videos in the future. I'm frequently uploading new training videos. Don't forget to check out my website at howtogurus.com. You can share this video with your friends and coworkers. Just click on share and then click on the social media buttons. Feel free to comment on my videos. I try to answer all comments as quickly as I can. And finally, you can get all of my training videos 
on DVD at howtogurus.com. Thanks again for watching.